everybody, welcome to another episode of Cape Rugby TV. And if you're watching us on repeat tonight, then welcome to all our DSTV viewers who are now uh, afforded the opportunity to watch Cape Town TV with Cape Rugby TV on uh, Channel 263. So welcome to all of those of you around the country who have heard so much about Cape Rugby TV. And tonight we give you the introduction of who we are and what we do. And of course, we focus a lot on the club rugby, but let me introduce you to my panel. Of course, a panel of experts and uh, rather opinionated buggers, but nevertheless, they sort of know their rugby, which is why we've got them on the show. Starting off on the left-hand corner, bouncing out of the red. Hello, Morgs. How's it, Chapes? How are you doing? Good to be on DSTV. So, yeah, good to see all the, all the new viewers that will be, will be watching our show. And a man who obviously no, needs, and all the facts are facts you as well, but I mean a man who has, needs absolutely no introduction to the world of sport. Um, Paulie, Paul Delport, the legend of rugby himself, sevens, under 19 world champs, under 20 world champs, I don't know, all of those accolades. Paul Delport, nice, thanks, uh, thanks for joining us tonight. Lovely to be here, Japs. As usual, you uh, managed to embarrass me straight off the cuff. Thank yeah, you very yeah. Much. <laughs> and I haven't lost my talent completely at that. And um, talking about embarrassing moments, um, a stalwart of Western Province rugby, Mr. H. Romeo. Baie goed, Epi, baie goed. And it's, it's fantastic that those can you believe that after three years, I mean, we're now into s episode 37 of our third season, next year going into our fourth season, and now we're on DSTV, and people all around the country have heard so much through social media and other way, otherwise, or might have even watched us online or on YouTube, now finally have a chance to see us nationally. Yeah, it's fantastic. You know, you guys are going to have to be on your toes now. <laughs> yeah, now you're going to have to really be on your toes. All right, folks. Well, uh, Western Province Club Rugby is, of course, what we focus on. And in the world of club rugby in Western Province, we really do focus a lot on uh, the communities and club rugby and the people involved in club rugby. And then we touch on the Stormers and we touch on Western Province Rugby. We touch on Western Province Sevens Rugby and then all sorts of various aspects uh, in the uh, sort of underlying aspects of, um, of rugby, such as development and transformation and empowerment in the rugby space. So lots of things to discuss. So make sure that if you are uh, watching us now for the first time on DSTV, Wednesday nights 9 o'clock and of course on Saturdays at 9 a.m. Um, when you can catch the repeat. But uh, one of the uh, stalwarts of rugby um, that uh, many of you would have known about, you would have heard on, the, uh, on TV and some of you might have been to a few functions, you would have seen uh, quite a lot of... Um, a cause for the support uh, to support Joost van der Beste as in the tall board of, uh, of Springbok Rugby. Well, there's another gentleman who also has been uh, struck with motor neuron disease, and that's Tinnis Lanier. He played centre for the Springboks, and he played centre for Western Province Rugby for many, many years. And down here in the Cape, and I suppose on a, on a greater level, he's an absolute legend. And the last weekend, and a number of weekends uh, before that, this last weekend, uh, was a function at the um, Northerns Rugby Club in Avonwood where the Western Bronze Rugby Legends and the Northerns Legends got together um, to raise funds for Tinnis Lanier and his um, struggle against motor neuron disease. Of course, it's a very rare disease and the, the medical expenses that comes with that uh, is quite phenomenal. Um, Mr. H, let me talk, turn to you. You know Tinnis Lanier quite well. You've known him for many years. Um, it's, well, I was out at Avonwood over the weekend and so were you. Incredible how the players have come out to support tennis. Yes, I must just say, that I was in their cloakroom. Uh, you know, long before they came out, they went to go dress in sweaters for the day. Yeah. And when, while I was inside there, the passion of those players that played with him, and not the passion for the match, but the passion for why they were there, that they were there to support a fellow member of a team that they played in, you know, and, and, and you could sense the urgency, you know, and, and they were pr very proud of the fact that they could assist Tinas. And I, I thought, you know, while I was watching them there, and, you know, that they really, really put everything into it to yeah. make sure that they support their fellow player. And that's great for, for the game of rugby. Well, you know, I was out there uh, with the crew on the weekend shooting it, and and folks, by the way, if, if you're watching Cape Rugby TV for the first time, understand we're a community channel and we uh, do things on a shoestring budget. Okay? So uh, we, we trust that you'll be a little bit tolerant with our, our methods of bringing you content from the community. But uh, I was out there over the weekend and just sitting here um, editing the footage. And there was, there was quite a lot of footage and we had to get rid of quite a lot of extra stuff to try and cut down. In fact, we cut down quite a lot of interviews and match, match, match highlights. But just watching 
the, um, you know, the guys talk about tennis and the, the highlights of the game, or at least the highlights, you know, sort of around the game, the guys talking and, and how they're going to raise funds, and, and every one of them so friendly with him, clearly very good friends. I mean, clearly there's a community here that of, of, of people who know each other and go back a long time. I was quite emotional just watching this video. As, as I tell you, it was, it was difficult to choose how to, to structure this. But um, anyway, folks, let us, uh, let us show you uh, some of the highlights. So uh, this is just a little bit of a pre-match, and then after that, we'll catch up with, um, with some of the uh, interviews and uh, some of the uh, events around the Tennis Near Rugby Day that was played over the weekend at Norden's Avonwood in El Cisrofir. <laughs> Yes, man, yeah. There's one for Tini. Well done, Tini boy. Let's listen to that. We took AJ Ramsa and uh, we're going to treat the people to a very nice dish. I hope you're going to be able to taste it and let's uh, hear the comments again. It's better, it's better than uh, Mount Nelson. <laughs> right, this is the Legends team at the moment. This is the team that won the 1999 Club Championship. Right? Everybody is here. Up here we've got some of the players playing. We've got Gerald Scores right here. Who's going to be the scrum of today in the Northern Legends team. If you look at if you look if you come down and you look at this picture again, you see Tina standing next to Mark Holland with a trophy in his hand. Right. That is what the whole day is all about. Thank you. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Now I'm too, come on, I'm too. You want? Jerome. Jeffy Mackel, director. Well, folks, if you watch that little insert there, um, you'd notice just how much camaraderie there is with Tina Sania and, and his uh, friends. Um, and things are, things are not going all that well there, folks. Uh, it is a very tough disease, and if you can contribute in any way to Tina Sania's uh, medical uh, um, funds, then, then uh, please get hold of the Western Province Rugby Football Union. Um, Paulie, you, you grew up, obviously, under the, the shadow of, as did Morgan, under the shadow of, of, of Tinnis Lanier. What sort of an impact did he have on your life? Yeah, Japs, absolutely. You, I think you were, you were spot on in the beginning. Um, just a person that commanded so much respect. And Morgan and I were very lucky. I think going up uh, in, the, in the age group levels and just in all the development structures, um, Tinnis was someone who was, who was always at the, at the forefront and just always, always with, a, with, a, with a smile on his face and, and willing to put the hard work in. And also just to... Im, 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 impart the knowledge um, onto the guys. And again, I think it's, it's a testament to his character that so many people showed up and so many people are willing to, to help him out and spend, uh, spend time with him. Yeah, I mean, I'm absolutely honored to have, to have learned from him and, uh, had an, uh, and had the experience of being coached by him. So Morgs, you play at number 12. I think Tina's played at 12 as well. Um, where did it go wrong uh, for you? <laughs> <laughs> no, look, I mean, yeah, as you know, as Paulie said, I was also, I was also, you know, fortunate enough to be coached by tennis, and 
and what an unbelievable you know for him to have imparted all his knowledge that he that he gained and obviously you know for me it was a bit more personal because of the fact that we both played at 12 yeah and yeah i mean if i if, if i could if i could play if i could be half the rugby player that he was i reckon i'd be a springbok today you know so yeah, definitely someone that I, that I looked up to as a rugby player and as I modelled my game around. So Tell us a little bit about that. I mean, when you say you modelled, modelled some of your game around him, maybe give us one thing. Because one of the things he was known for was, was his hits. Uh, he used to put in really hard hits. Is there anything <laughs> that jumps out for you in, in terms of his, his style of play that, that worked for you as a number 12? And, and don't, take any, don't, take, don't try and lose any credit. We know that you played <laughs> for the Springboks and then you played for the Stormers and that you played for Western Province Rugby. Yeah, look, defensively, I think Tinnis was that was his that was where he was known for, you know, it's sort of the, the sort of the brick wall that was that he that he built up around himself, and I think that's that's sort of the way I where I sort of try to pick up and you know and learn from quite a bit. Well, defensively, he was extremely sound, you know, he didn't miss a tackle, and in the collision, he was just you know ruthless, and I think you know um, he built up that re reputation, and that's what made him a springbok at the end of the day. So if I could steal something from him, it'd probably be it'd probably be his defensive game, and then also. You know, his communication with his fly off, I mean, if you've, I've, I was lucky enough to watch videos and even just, you know, play touch rugby with him. And his communication was something that stood out in the shoulders above anyone on the field, whether he was, you know, a few years back when he was still coaching to, to, to you know, to when he was a professional rugby player. It was the fact that he would communicate, you'd be the eyes of the fly off for 80 minutes. And, and I think that's what made him a successful 12. So, yeah. yeah, something that I'll definitely, you know, cherish for, for a long well, time. I didn't have a chance to play rugby with tennis. Uh, but I was unfortunate enough to play golf with Tinnis. Uh, Tinnis and I played in, 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 the, in, the thing, in the Stormers golf day or something. We teamed up. We were the two ball. And I think between the two of us, we came stone last. <laughs> we were both just as bad as the other one. But uh, an absolute jaw driving around in the cart with Tinnis. And, and of course, knowing him through the ranks of, of club rugby, really exceptional. But it's the friendship that, that, and the friends that came out on the day, folks, that made it so exceptional and so emotional. Um, of course, we had a whole bunch of fat obalis trying to play <laughs> rugby on Saturday. <laughs> Mr. H, you must have seen, I've never, I haven't seen so many pins yeah, in, in a long time. I, while I was standing there and watching them, you know, and then once they put the sweaters on, yeah. I thought, but surely they couldn't have done that, you know, because some of them look like they swallowed the scrum off in the <laughs> earlier <laughs> life. <laughs> because the stomachs were quite big. Yeah, no, I tell but you. But it, it, you know, that... They didn't matter to them, but they were there. Not at all, because, uh, you know, I, the, uh, they didn't even try and pull their jerseys down from and then over their stomach. <laughs> you know, so they were obviously having a lot of fun because there, there was no scam to But I tell you something, that first, and we're going to see some of it now, the most exciting part, which is why we don't show too many highlights of the game, eventually I just gave up. <laughs> But the most exciting part for them was the warm-up. <laughs> in the warm-up, Paulie, you know what the warm-up can get like. Um, it's a little bit like your social rugby. You know, the, the warm-up is probably more important than anything else. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Always good fun. Um, and then, like you say, especially if you have a couple of old buddies that haven't played in a while. No, I tell you, the guys were talking legendary stuff there, you know. They were, and, 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 they, and you'll see it now, folks. You'll see it on the screen now. But they were doing line-out calls, you know. Um, <laughs> Four, 29, 7, 17, and it would go to a jumper. And then 4, 29, 3, 9. I think they were just making up numbers. <laughs> <laughs> they just kept throwing it to whoever was going to jump in the air. <laughs> Let's uh, check out some of those, those highlights, folks, and enjoy it with us. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, we we're going to make this an enjoyable one. <laughs> playing playing old, old rules, hit and run away. <laughs> Their commitment and heart is here, that's why they all pitch to play for Tinnis, which is wonderful. Yeah, it's a good goal, but we've seen it, it's good. We've seen it, but it's good. We've seen it, but it's good. We've seen it, but it's good. Hey, what's up, Mekki? What's up, Mekki? Bayern, 
He knows being some Allah. What's supposed to be the two comes Oh, it went well. Uh, you could see that some of the girls, some of the guys, just grew some tummies, and uh, the second half it was evident that we were unfit, but it went very well. We did this, we did this for, for a very, very good course. Um, for Tinas, everything on the best, and I praise with you and your family. Thank you very much for this day. Fantastic. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so some rather emotional moments there, but um, hey, it's, uh, we're still hanging in there behind Tinnis and we'll support him uh, constantly. So folks, if you are out there, as I said, if you can support uh, Tinnis with his uh, medical um, bills, get hold of uh, the West Morales Rugby Football Union, 021-659-4600. And I'm sure anything that you can contribute uh, to him and his family will... Um, will obviously help in a major way. When we come back, we'll take a look at what's happening in Western Bronze Rugby at the moment. The leagues might be finished, but there is Sevens Rugby, there's the Steve Twetty Tournament, the emerging Western Province side is up in action, and to find out more about that, we'll speak to Morgan Newman, who's currently playing in the Sevens side, uh, at least in the emerging Western Province side. And of course, uh, to tell us more about the Sevens, we'll have a chat with Paul Delport, who's captain of the Springbok Sevens. How hard do you want to go? We'll be back with you guys in a sec. So yes, uh, the uh, leagues are pretty much done and dusted. And of course, next week we will see the award ceremony taking place where there'll be um, all the accolades handed out for the various division and league winners. And uh, of course, the Western Bronze rugby team and the Stormers will also have all their prizes handed out. Mr. H, you've been in, uh, involved in the awards for a number of years now. Um, it's a fairly serious evening. Yeah, I think, you know, handing out all those trophies and getting it done quickly, it's quite... Yeah, it takes quite a lot of planning. How many trophies do you actually have to hand out and how old are some of those trophies? No, well, there are quite a number of them over 100 years old. Really? Uh, those shields are particularly very old uh, that the under-21s play for and then some of those other trophies are 90, 100 years. Yeah. I was going to ask you where you had them made, but um, it was probably before your time. Um, sure. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> the, 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 the big award of the night, what would you say it is? Uh, the biggest, what is the well, award, the, the one we won? Yeah, the, the main one is, the, you know, the, the Super, uh, Super League A league competition. Yeah. That's the, that's the main trophy for the night. Morgz, you've been at that, those awards a number of times now. If there was an award, I mean, I'm, I'm, if we're not talking in the club space now, in the professional space, because you as a Stormers and Province player, you had to attend the awards on a number of occasions. I think you might even have taken one, one or two of those awards. Um, what is the, the, the choice award for the professional players? I think as a, as a player, you know, it's probably, to get the Players' Player of the Year is probably, you know, mm -hmm. to be, to be rec recognised by your teammates is probably, you know, sort of a massive achievement. Although, um, you know, also the players, the player of the year is also the other one, you know. So between those two, it'll be difficult to choose. But personally, for me, on a personal note, I think if I ever received the players' player of the year, I think I, I, it would be a massive feather in my cap to know that your teammates are the ones, you know, sort of um, uh, sort of recognizing you as, as the player of the year. You know, sometimes um, the player of the year is, is maybe influenced by, by you know, sort of administra administrators of the world. Mm -hmm. But when you, get, when you get the accolade from your players, then it sometimes holds a bit more water. So personally, I think I definitely go for the players' player of the year. Paul, do you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. I think there's, there's, there's nothing that better than to be recognized by your peers. You know, the guys that you're sweating and grinding with every day, for them to put your name forward and say, listen, this is the person who's, who's done well, I think that's Is it fantastic. a little bit like your work environment where you can like be nominated as the employee of the month? Or is it... More than that. No, look, I think it's a, <laughs> it's a, it's probably a little bit more than that. I think it's you know it's consistency, consistency throughout the throughout the year that, that that earns you the the players player of the year, and it's done quite nicely at Western Province. You know, I've, I've obviously had to fill it in a few times, and and it's quite private. I mean, you fill in the form, you don't you don't necessarily. Oh, have is, to that how, is, is that how it works? So yeah, they, they, they ask you to you have to nominate. Yeah, yeah, you fill out a form, and then it's you know you don't have to tell anybody who it is, and you fold it up and you put it in a little box at at the training ground and, and that's taken and obviously counted and that's how they, they, they get the player, players player of the year. So yeah, it's done, it's done in the right way and it's, it's, it's definitely holds, um, holds quite a bit of water in terms of you know, accolades that, that you as a player want to receive. Polly, did you have to fill it in yourself? Yes, yeah. I had to fill in. No, I never the voted for myself. Polly put his own name. I never, I, 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 I never voted for myself. I think he put his own name a few times. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had to get at least one vote. Come on, <laughs> so yeah. when you when you filled that form in, what was going through your mind when you thought about the players, the the 
all the players around you? Were you thinking about how they played with you on the field? Or were you thinking about how they practiced with you? Or was it, were you thinking about who comes to have the best bri flays with you? Oh, Japs, it is, it is tough. Like Morgie said, it's, it, it is tough to be objective. You know, when, when you've got that form and, you, and you're thinking, I mean, for Morgie and I, when we were at Province, I mean, Morgie's my best mate. So we were, we were very close. So you're almost, you're halfway putting in our Morgan Newman. Um, not, not, not that he didn't have a good season, but that's the, the, that's the first name. So like you said, it, it, is, it is quite difficult to, to remain objective. But yeah, Jabs, I think it's, it's, it's pretty much all encompassing. Mostly, mostly it's, 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 it's the guys like Morgan said who, uh, who, who, who had great seasons and also had a great impact um, on the field, you know, in terms of us winning games, but also off the field. Because, I mean, everyone knows in terms of professional sport how much goes in off the field terms of their input you know game plan that kind of thing yeah look i think the other thing is also it's, it's it's often as a player you know it's it's the sort of the unsung hero of the team that that we that that, that we'd like that i definitely i often pick is is the guy that doesn't score the tries it's not the guy that you know the fans love but it's the guy that when you're on the field in the 79th minute he's the guy that's going to be there cleaning the last ruck putting his body on the line day in and day out on the training field on the you know at newlands and I think that's often the guy that I used to put down was the guy that, that is sort of the unsung hero. Nobody knows about him, but he's the one that, you know, when he's not there, you can, as a team, you're hurting. And, that's, and I think that's what I did, you know, throughout the years um, of selecting these, this player's player of the year. Uh, well, it's, I think that's one of the reasons why uh, us as fans follow and love rugby, because we kind of feed off that energy. But at the same time, if you just look back to the Tinus Lanier thing that we just saw now, that friendship playing with, that's what actually has carried him from a support factor over and beyond the, the, the final whistle. So, mm. you know, I think, I think it's absolutely incredible. But anyway, at Western Province now, of course, the, the, the awards, as we say, is next week. But the other activity that's currently happening is the Western Province Club Rugby Sevens, where many of the clubs have combined into groups and are playing sevens on Friday evenings. We're going to quickly take a look at the groups and then we'll take a look at the fixtures. But certainly rugby is not finished by a long shot. In the groups there, of course, we've uh, got group one, two, three, and four, and it's been divided into uh, Stellenbosch, Belleville, UWC, Hands and Arts, and Georges, Silverleaf, Rocklands, and Peninsula in group one. While in group two, Durbel, Helderberg, Cows River, Villages, Scottsdale, Northerns, Imikawi, Temperance. Group three sees Tigerberg, Falls Bay, NNK, Salorians, Young Peoples, Lagunia, Whistling Wheels, and Titans. And in group four, Belhar, Brackenfell, Macassar, Esterafir, Lower Pearl, Allendale, Clutisville, and Progress. Now, for the folks out there that have just joined us, that are watching uh, Cape Rugby TV for the first time on a national basis, just me reading those club names to you, folks, and let me just tell you, that's only, a, like, I think about 40% uh, of the clubs we have in Western Province. Me reading those names to you will give you a rough indication just how many clubs we've actually got in Western Province and exactly how big it is. So when you're watching the show now, understand, we talk, when we talk Cape Rugby TV and we talk Western Province Club Rugby, we're talking about 110 clubs spread across in excess of 12 different divisions and leagues. And that is how busy club rugby is in uh, Western Province. So it is an enormous affair. So if you ever have a chance to come down to Cape Town for the in our national viewers now, come and watch a club rugby game. It is absolutely spectacular. And uh, we hope to bring you lots of action from the world of club rugby. Let's quickly look at the fixtures. Uh, of course, uh, this um, Friday is more fixtures at Belleville and then, of course, at Macassar. And I'm not going to go through all the fixtures there. You can see all the groups are taking part. But um, for the folks that want to get around to the Belleville side, uh, you can go and check out a number of fixtures there. And, of course, then on Friday, also starting at 6.30 at Macassar. And then also on the Belleville B field, you'll see further action there as... Uh, those, both those fields continue to be jam-packed with activity. Right, folks, we're going to take an ad break, and uh, when we come back, we'll take a look at some more uh, action. Of course, the Villagers Sevens uh, tournament is happening um, on the 19th of October, so if you're keen on some Sevens rugby out at Villagers, get down to the Villagers Super Sevens. Um, there's still one or two spots available there. It's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of action. We'll take an ad break, and when we come back, we'll also take a look at what's happening in the rest of rugby around the world. <laughs> this is rather funny, folks. Um, the Villagers um, Super Sevens uh, is taking place on the 19th of October. And of course, the Cape Rugby TV team is the uh, official broadcast partner to the Villagers Sevens. And it's happening at Villagers um, on the 19th. It starts rather early in the morning. It's going to be a big jaw all the way through. Now, we were just having a bit of a laugh. That I think we've got more administrators than we have team members. Morgs, you've put this team together. I know you're playing for the emerging Western Brahmin side on the day. So we're obviously going to miss your skillful talents. Um, 
but <laughs> tell us about the team. Yeah, look, we've got uh, we've got some uh, we've got a good array of um, of, of, of team of, of members. Um, as you said, uh, we've at this stage we've got a bit more admi ad administrators than we do um, <laughs> than we do have players. So just go but through um, go through some of the admin. First of all, go through some of the players. Who've okay. we, who we got so okay, far? Okay, well, we've got Pierre Cronier, who's um, well, Hamilton's fullback, will be there. Yanni Duplessis has also been there. Who is and he from? Where's Yanni Duplessis also so Hamilton's I'm, guy. I'm so supposed to be like the team manager or something. I don't know who's playing <laughs> for me. <laughs> I'm trying to work out. Who, Paulie, you're gonna have to help me. Out. You're assistant manager, right? Well, James, if the contract's on the table now. I'll yeah. I'll sign it. <laughs> Hold on, folks. Here we go. Um, yes, yeah, we're gonna give, we're gonna make a contract. This is to certify that Paul Delport is the. Here you go. And there's. You know, the, what did you call it? The, 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 uh, so, uh, I'm the equipment manager. Manager I'm the, I'm the of the boy. Cape Rugby TV Seven Seven. When last did someone give you a contract for, Shh, for twelve it's rand? While, it's been a while. <laughs> Two rand fifty. That's your fee. <laughs> <laughs> sign on the dot. Like okay. So yeah, no. Look, and then we've got. Um, uh, yeah, um, our management will be um, Ishmael Dolly. Will be the he's the he's the official team coach. Yeah. Uh, Paul Dalpo doesn't know it yet, but he's the assistant manager. <laughs> Uh, you've just been appointed manager, <laughs> and Eddie Jacobs is going to be our logistics manager. So Eddie Jacobs, that you get because we've seen AG, Eddie handle uh, on the field already. He was like cleaning up and drying He's, up. You so know what I mean? Eddie exactly. Ja Eddie Jacobs, by the way, folks, uh, former uh, Springbok and Natal Sharks, um, uh, uh, as well as uh, Kelsriver, um rugby player. So and, yeah, so and is then Kelsriver or Crawford that mistake? Hands and hearts. Hands and hearts. Hands and hearts. Okay. Well. Um, Eddie Jacobs, folks. So we bring them on, yeah. Uh, so the Cape Rugby TV n the team. Now we've got three Springboks involved. Yeah, Egan Seconds is also a Springbok Sevens player. He's uh, dusting off his boots and he'll be running out for us. Um, nah. He might be playing prop, but he'll be there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we got Egan Seconds. Egan Seconds, Yanni Dubisi, Pierre Cronier, yeah. and uh, yeah, quite a few other guys that uh, you know, sort of um, that are coming through. Uh, John Luca Del Fante plays 13 for Hamilton's. He's also gonna he's dusting off the boots. Um, yeah, and I just heard that he's retired, so. He's dusting on the boots and he'll be back. So yeah, we've got we've got a nice wide array of players and, and we'll be competing. That's that's the most important thing. Okay, let's let's just talk about the more, yeah the more important thing as you were saying. I mean, Paulie, uh, you've played sevens now at the highest level, HSBC sevens. You played in the World Cup. You've won the World Cup. Um, just quickly give us a snapshot of some of your best memories in in World Sevens, and then we need to talk to you about the social side of sevens. Um, uh, quick ones, obviously the, the, the first time you ever played, I was lucky enough, 2003, showing my age now. Uh, first seven tournament I played in, we won, that was still under Chester Williams in Dubai, that was fantastic. Uh, played against a very good New Zealand side. And then obviously winning, winning in George, 2008, was the first time we've ever won uh, our home league. And then, and then this year, I think that this year as well, winning in Vegas. After playing our worst tournament ever on the series, we lost four out of five games in Wellington. Yeah. Everybody wrote us off, and then we, we came back and we won the Vegas tournament. So that was great. And uh, did you? I've got to ask you: Did you guys go out and actually play a little bit of blackjack? No, no, JP. I stayed in my room. I spoke to my fiance for two hours, and I went to bed. He <laughs> <laughs> did shed a tear on TV, though. <laughs> it was. I, we were watching, by the way. We were watching. It was like three o'clock in the morning or something. It was like I don't know some ridiculous time, and we were all glued to the uh, to, and, and try like try to tweet like why is Paulie not tweeting back you know like <laughs> and I'm happy to say JPT that I've got I've got the the, sh the, the jersey that he played in he you, Paulie gave to me so you got Paulie's it's jersey it's probably up on my wall at um at home all right well Paul you told me that you lost the jersey <laughs> we only we only get given one or two JP I can cut it in half and give half to you and half to Morgie well if you're going to cut it in half then make sure you give uh, the bottom half to Morgie <laughs> 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 you guys all thought we were going to cut it this way. <laughs> You've got to think laterally, guys. Like Be like Steve Jobs. Connect the dots. Anyway, uh, okay, so more importantly than the actual game itself, um, Sevens Rugby, the social side. What an absolute jaw. It's taken off. It's really become very exciting. Absolutely, Japs. Um, I think that the, the game's absolutely exploded. I think people are people now, you know, with the Pro 20 cricket sevens, I think sports fans are more instant, the whole instant gratification. It's fun if you just look at a sevens tournament. On, uh, on one day, you get to see 16 teams playing. And also, you know, for us guys, it's not too difficult explaining to the wives and girlfriends the intricacies of a scrum and a line out. It's easy. They throw <laughs> the ball around. Everyone pretty much performs the same role when it's, you know, when it's, when it's in open play. And again, like you said, I think the different tournaments organizers have put a massive effort in to bring people in, to make it exciting, to make it fun. There are always events running around the actual sevens tournaments all around the world. So yeah. it, just, it, it, just, it just makes for, like you said, a fantastic, it can be a family day, it can be a day with your mates, it can be a bachelor party, a bachelorette party, you can do whatever. It's Which it most fun. of the time is actually, <laughs> yeah. Um, but it, you know, that's one of the reasons why soccer has got so many fans, because like anyone could do it, there's really no rules, you just like kick a ball to your feet. 
I mean, it doesn't really take much to do that. Uh, but I suppose, you know, <laughs> it's a simplistic kind of game. You know, it probably ends up so quite often with even no score. Um, so if you really want to explain it to your girlfriend and don't after, feel after like... After 90 minutes. Yeah, 90 yeah. minutes of running upside, up and down and up and down, having naught, naught. You know, soccer, yeah. but yeah, well, whatever. I mean, if you want to play football, you know, there's a few people around that admire that sport. <laughs> um, but uh, go have a draw. Uh, Mr. H, but quickly on the, on the seventh side, um, we've got quite a lot of skilled sevens rugby players. And most notably, one of the guys in Paulie would know him as well as Chesnel Colby, who's playing now for West Bromwich. Yeah, no, oh, well, he was fantastic. So. But... You know what, what is missing here is Cape Town doesn't have a major sevens international or provincial tournament. We should, you know, the powers that be should follow that. They will have a fantastic support for it. Let's quickly catch up with some of the rugby news from around the world. And uh, some interesting things have just come to light. Uh, and let's take a look at some of those headlines. The Sharks have confirmed the appointment of former Springbok World Cup winning coach Jake White as their new director of rugby. And even though the Springboks lost the All Blacks, they'll continue to improve and, of course, pose an even greater challenge next year. Meanwhile, the Springbok Sevens rugby squad departed on Monday for Australia for the HSBC Sevens. Uh, that's for the World Series under their new coach, Neil Powell. The Western Province Springbok players are back for the first round of the Curry Cup competition. Argentinian scrum of Martin Landajo has been banned for a week. That for stamping after he was cited following the Pumas defeat by Australia and next year's Super Rugby season will get underway in South Africa with the Cheetahs and the Lions up first. That's of course on the 15th of February. So lots of um, action there as we see what's happening in the world of rugby but just uh, let's just touch on some of those things. The first I think uh, Jake White, uh, probably you've been coached by Jake White I think. Um, what do you make of Jake uh, at the Sharks? Dangerous combo. Yeah, dangerous combo. Um, I think John Smith used the word formidable, and I, I don't. I don't think anybody can deny that. They they obviously have a fantastic relationship, and again, I think you you can see Jake White, and you know, at the risk of offending some people, taking a very average Brumby side to a Super Rugby final, just shows just shows well, you know how much how much he knows about rugby and what a good coach he is. Yeah, he's obviously quite disappointed about the fact that he didn't get the Australian job. There was a bit of controversy around that. Clyde Rathbone gave him a hell of a hard time as to why he came down there and why did he commit and then he ended up running away. So maybe a bit of friction between Rathbone and Jake White. Who knows? We'll, we'll leave that up to them to sort out. But um, also the interesting thing there, I think uh, Brendan Fenter, he's hopping around a little bit and I'm not quite convinced that he, that he left there on his own accord. But um, nevertheless, we'll leave that up to the internal politics of uh, what's happening up in KZN. Um, the other headline there, the Springboks losing to All Blacks, but the Springboks are um, able to hold their head high. Um, gentlemen, we said it last week, there was too much hype around the fact that the Springboks were just going to walk out and beat the All Blacks. It was never going to be that easy. Mm -hmm. They would always pose a supreme challenge, Mr. H. Yes, uh, it was, you know... Like Jean said, they reached their goal scoring four, but they forgot that the All Blacks could score five or six. Yeah. And I, I still, you know, in my simple mind, I can't understand why the coach make a change by taking hooker and prop off when we are on a five meter attacking scrub. All my life in rugby I was taught, you don't make changes like that when you're there. You wait for the next time around. We mm. made it, nothing came of it, we lost the opportunity. Yeah, I must say, um, I know you brought in Kuni Oosthuizen yeah. and um, Adrian Strauss uh, right at the end there, but maybe he thought that the fresher legs would be stronger legs to, to take them over, mm -hmm. the, over the line. The Springbok Sevens, of course, uh, left on Monday on the way to Australia for the HSBC Sevens under the new coach, Neil Powell. Paul, you, uh, you coached with Neil. Um, how's he as a player, coach? Uh, goes back to that whole relationship thing how's he going to do do you think yeah I, th I think Neil will do fantastically well um you know, it's been it's been a bit of a difficult uh lead up and build up because uh Neil and Vuyo were both assistant coaches running the team so I think now just to just to add a little bit more structure uh to what the guys are doing I think it'll be a bit easier everyone knows their role now and Neil I mean he's a fantastic sevens player he's got 35 tournaments um he knows he knows how to do the business he's won tournaments and uh we've we've gone over there with a with a very very good squad uh, Sizzle Africa back, Kyle Brown back. Um, mm. So looking very, looking very forward to watching the guys play over the weekend. Going to miss Chesnel and Colby? Yeah, definitely. But uh, I don't think we'll be able to pry Chesnel away from Province or the Stormers yeah. anytime. <laughs> <laughs> He's having an absolute fantastic time there. And then Morg, some of the box are back. Talking about Chesnel and Colby, some of the box are back for Western Province. 
And of course, they take on, uh, I think, the Sharks mm -hmm. on the weekend. That's going to be a cracker of the match. But when we got back the likes of Ibn Etzebet and Jean de Villiers, they're certainly going to put up a good, uh, a good showing. Yeah, I think it's it's sort of a, it's a it's a nice it's a nice headache to sit with. I think for Alistair Goodsey at the moment, you know, um, the likes of Skalk is now back and he's in full swing and he's he's playing good rugby again. You come back with Sia comes back, Jean de Villiers comes back, Dwayne from Ireland comes back, and all of a sudden you sit with a headache of, of who do you pick and who, who sits on the bench and you know who who, who fits in where. So it's a nice headache for Alistair to have, and you know, considering they haven't lost the game in nine games, and now you've got your returning Springboks. It's looking, looking, looking pretty, pretty good for Western Province come the, the playoffs. A few people asked the question, well, why not stick with the young guys? They got you to where you are now. Alistair's answer to that was quite simple. We will always play the best team we can possibly field. Your feeling on that, Paulie? Yeah, true. Um, I'm pretty, pretty in, in, indifferent. You know, I think I was reading the, reading the Cape Times yesterday and all Aswak Mahmoud made a very good point. Could someone like Jean, um, you know, the guys have, the young guys have done well. Give the give our Springbok captain a rest. He's yeah. always going to have to go and play the end of year tour again. Um, I think someone like like Eben has been monumental in the forwards. Plays such a physical game. Maybe give the guy a rest. You know, it'd be completely different if Province were struggling and we we're languishing at the bottom of the log. But we top of the log, pretty much already secured a home semi final. Um, and again, like like I think like like Morgi said, you know, the young guys have done fantastically well. Yeah. We need to see what depth we have in case we have injuries next year in, uh, in, in Super Rugby and going to Curry Cup. So it's a bit of a catch-22. Talking about Super Rugby, um, they've now announced the uh, season. If we look at the Stormers, I mean, they're, they're going to have a bye in their first round. But Morgs, if we look at this Curry Cup squad, who's top of the log, who are the Curry, current Curry Cup champions, and then, of course, the fact that the Springboks coming back, and if you look at, you both said it now, that headache of having such an abundance of talent available. Um, we must be going to the Super 15 next year with a a huge, um, call it advantage or a big opportunity. Yeah, no, look, I mean, depth is paramount in this in that Super 15 competition. You know, there's just the amount of games you play. It's just no way that one player can play can play. You know, I mean, you saw what happened to Dwayne Vermeil and halfway through the Super 15 last year. You know, just your body takes a beating. So, depth is important. And, and having seen what what depth is problems have at the moment with with their sort of you know with their with their spring box away, it's looking good for them um, going into Super 15 next year. But again, you know, let's um, let's sort of. We don't want to build them up to break them down. Let's, you know, let, let them quietly simmer and, and, and I'm sure the results will go their way. Yeah, we don't want to put the hoodoo on them, so to speak. Eh? <laughs> yeah, the commentator's yeah. curse is a, it's a dangerous thing. So. <laughs> the commentator's curse, yeah. <laughs> Folks, Evox Advanced Nutrition, as you see behind me, or was up a second ago there, Evox Advanced Nutrition is the official sports nutrition supplier to Western Province Rugby and the DHL Stormers. Now, those of you who have just tuned in um, and have been watching, are watching us currently on DS TV and around the country, you're going to have to do a little bit of catch up because uh, now's your opportunity to win for yourself a um, Evox Advanced Nutrition hamper as well as a tray and a shaker, right? So the Synergy Whey Protein, um, as many of our club rugby local fans know, uh, Synergy Whey Protein is the official sports nutrition supplement to Western Province Rugby and the DHL Stormers. So that's the first product that you can win, the Synergy Whey Protein. And uh, we give you also, um, to give to a club of your choice, a uh, Evox tray. Of course, we, we then of course hope that uh, it's a local club rugby fan that, that wins it so we can get the, the tray going out to someone locally. And then you win for yourself the uh, Shaker 600. Now the Shaker 600, in case you want to know how this works, all right, the Shaker 600 is a dynamic shaker that you can then use with a shake. We're lucky to get this from the guys at Evox. So the Shaker 600, you can see it's pretty small here. It's about that big. Okay, so what I need to do is I open this up and I take out the little blender thingamajig and I take out the containers. Now I've got three compartments. One, two, and three. I can put my powder in here. You just put your powder inside there. It's as easy as that. You put that back on. You take this off. You put your capsules in there, your vitamins and minerals. You pop that in there and then you can pop that in your cubby hole. So you can put your powder in there and you can screw that at the bottom. You put your magafta back on there. Put your lid on. All right. Alternatively, you can unscrew the whole lot. Take that off. Put your magafta back in there. Pop that back in there. Put your little blender thingamajig on and then you've got your entire Shaker 600 back up and for grabs. You want to win the Shaker 600 and you want to win this uh, Synergy Whey Protein, you need to tell us who is the official sports nutrition supplier to Western Province Rugby and the DHL Stormers. And at the same time, give us your name and tell us what their favorite product is. 33280, that's the number that you need to SMS. SMS your name and your answer to 33280. Remember, the key word is, of course, um, the product, the uh, Stormers' uh, favorite product. Congratulations to last week's winner. Last week's winner, Lloyd Abrams, walks away with the Synergy Whey Protein, the uh, tray, as well as the uh, Shaker 600. All right, this is a 
a rare commodity. You want the Shaker 600? It, it's like it's like a lunch in a box. Everything, three meals in one go, makes using supplementation so much easier. And of, and of course, if you're a rugby player, you need to be working on pre-season, off-season, and during the season. So nutrition, extremely important. So Evox Advanced Nutrition, the official sports nutrition is applied to Western Province Rugby and the DHL Stormers. And that's the key word there. Just a little clue for you. that You need to SMS to double three two eight zero. We'll take your ad break. And when we come back, we'll take a look at what's happening in the Curry Cup. Some interesting fixtures. And we'll give you an opportunity to win those Leisure Hotel competition. Back in a sec. So the Curry Cup is now heading towards the sort of real exciting part where the box are back and uh, we're going to see some really interesting challenges here and I think uh, notably the, the challenge that we saw over the weekend was of course um, Western Province up against the Lions at Newlands. It was a 2 o'clock kickoff right before the All Black game and um, well you know the Lions certainly didn't go to sleep. Morgs, that game I know you were playing for the emerging side and then we're going to touch on that in a second but um, Lions a dangerous outfit. Yeah, I catch the repeat, you know, in my hotel room on, on Saturday night, and that's a good Lions side. I mean, you know, they're, they're really playing good rugby, and they'll be in the semi-finals, you know, come come the playoffs. So for Western Province to, to bag a bonus point, you know, at Newlands, it's, it's, it's a good performance, and uh, it really bodes well come come the, the playoffs. So they got one more game left against the Sharks to decide who will end top of the log, and then and then it's playoff time. So I look forward to seeing the Springboks back, and, and, and Western Province falling well, and, and hopefully lifting the trophy come the 20, I think, 26th of October. Mr. H, it looks like Rikwas is the wind is now blown out of the sails. Yeah, they always start very fast and then disappear. Game over. All done. You Custom. don't think we're going to see them again in the... In the no, in I don't think so. That's no. it, finished now. A 52-21 loss for them against the Cheetahs is a big hiding. Do you think that demotivates the side? Yeah, I think, you know, with one more game to go, they, they wouldn't... There's nothing in it for them anymore. Yeah, yeah. Paulie, and then if we look at uh, the Bulls there, um, they uh, went down against the Sharks. Uh, the Sharks, <coughs> just you can't write these guys off as long, as long as we think the Bulls, but then the Springboks are going to come back. Do you think that, the, that this is going to make an impact to the Bulls, that the Bulls are going to come back out on top over above the Sharks? Yeah, uh, tough one again. Like we were chatting about the, you know, what, what problems are going to do. It depends, depends how many of the box are going to play, and it depends how quickly they, they fit in. I think there's been a lot of chat about the shark scrum over the weekend. I mean, that will obviously be great if you have Bismarck and Yanni and Beast back. Um, that's yeah. the that's a pretty <laughs> solid platform. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I think I, th I, Jabs, I, I think it's gonna be very interesting. I think this this time of the year it always gets interesting, and uh, and and most of the, let's just be honest, most of the unions are gonna plow their spring box back in. Listen, I've worked out the solution uh, to Yanni Duplessis, and it's not that hard actually. And uh, it's, it's, it's fairly simple. Uh, you want to you take uh, Yanni Duplessis out of the mix completely? You just put Cheslin Colby in front of him. <laughs> 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 can't find him, can't see him, can't catch him. It doesn't really matter. Anyway, the defense there. Let's have a quick look at the Curry Cup results. Uh, Crick was going down to uh, the uh, Cheetahs 52-21. Western Province 36-23 against the Lions. It wasn't a walk in the park. And then the Bulls uh, going down to the Sharks. 16 points to 18. Um, before we carry on with the fixtures, of course, the Curry Cup fixtures, Morgs, just tell us a little bit about the emerging Western Province rugby side, um, which was formerly known as the amateur side. You guys played against KZN. Who went up? How did it go? Yeah, we went down to Durban this weekend. You know, we played against the, the Sharks, also the Sharks emerging side, or the Sharks called it the Sharks amateur side. And yeah, well, luckily we, we got the result. It wasn't pretty rugby. We won 25 21 against the Sharks. We played at the Harlequins Rugby Club at their, their home ground. And yeah, I mean, like I said, the performance wasn't, wasn't sort of the best performance around. But I know, again, playoff stages, you know, it's a, it was a semi final um, for us on, on Saturday. And, and sometimes the, the performance is not as important as the result, you know. So we'll take the result. And, and we got the Bulls in, uh, on the 19th of October at Newlands in the curtain raiser to the, to the, uh, to the Curry Cup semi final. So yeah, it's a, it's a good one for us. And, and we're looking forward to, to the game in two weeks' time. Did, um, how amateur were those players? Yeah, look, I mean, a lot of this, I mean, uh, Ronnie Cook and a few other, you know, guys who had been contracted with the Sharks happened to run out for the Sharks, you know, for the amateur side, obviously not contracted at the moment. And then obviously with us, you know, also, I mean, there's, like, I, I've been contracted before. So, yeah, I mean, the guys are amateur, but, but at the same time, the guys that, that work, work hard at, at obviously, you know, at, at, the, at the rugby and, and sort of they've got some seriously good clubs and, and down in Durban, you know, there's the likes of Collegians, there's the likes of Harlequins, Rovers. So they're, they're, they're also, they're, they're very, they've got a lot, lot of good core group of players to choose from and then it was a good shock side that came out and played so to get the result we'll, we'll be happy we're very happy with that and, and Jerome's been playing a, a massive role with that side you know Jerome 
because obviously having coach at the highest level is imparting all his knowledge on the team and, and we're really starting to play some good rugby so we've got two weeks of training and then it's the semi-final I mean the finals against the Bulls is that your finals on the, on the 19th yeah the final will be on the 19th of October and it's uh, the curtain raiser to the to the Curry Cup semi-final that Western Province will be playing in so it's so a, yeah it's a lot, lot, lot of action happening at Newlands on you're the looking forward to running back on the park at Newlands wearing the blue and white hoops yeah, I was saying, you know, I think I sent out a tweet on, on Saturday night. It's, uh, it's something special to, to pull on that blue and white hoops. And, and for me to have pulled it over my head again for the first time in, I think, three years was really something special. You know, it, was, it, it had, my, had my little bottom lip uh, quivering. But, but yeah, <laughs> it, I'm looking forward to, I'm look, really looking forward to running out of Newlands again, you know, on the 19th and, and pulling on the blue and white hoops. And hopefully the people will come out and support the side. How many of the other guys have, uh, in, in the emerging Western Province team, have as worn the blue and white hoops have, have run through the tunnel? Um, that's, that's actually a, a good question, you know. I don't think many of them have, you know. They're all sort of the best club players, but they, 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 a lot of them are, and I think there are about five of them that are currently training with the Curry Cup side. But I think there's not, there's not anybody else that has a, a senior cap for the, for the union. So they wouldn't have run out there, you know, unless it's been for their club maybe once, I think, you know. The likes of maybe Snaz, who plays wing for Balville. I know Balville played a game at Newlands, you know, maybe last year sometime, and he may have run out. But, in, but for the Blue and White Hoops, I don't think anyone has, so... But, um, we're going to hopefully so, have, uh, what, what so Dave Kagan has said to us is that we will be having a f two or three practices at the, at the stadium so the guys can get used to it so they're not sort of shell-shocked when we run out there for the first time in a match. So we'll be training there once or twice, you know, come the next two weeks. And then by the time hopefully we get there and we play the, play the Bulls, the guys are not going to be too shell-shocked. Um, Mr. Ags, let me ask you how much, I mean, Morgan doesn't want to, probably w won't want to jump into this, but uh, I think he is one of the... Are you captaining the side, Morgs, or vice captain? Or yeah, captain? I think I'm, I'm one of the leaders in the side, so yeah. It's, okay, it's so let's leave you out of the picture then, because obviously <laughs> you're not going to want to talk about Mr. H, how much of a difference will it make for this emerging side to have experience on the field at Newlands? Well, yeah, they, they must practice there. Eh? Otherwise, you know, you can, you can get lost there. Eh? No, but I mean, yeah. will the emerging side look to Morgan on the day for leadership? Oh, yes, of course, definitely. Okay. I think he will have to show not the people there you'll have to show us yeah we're going to be you on know, the sidelines I mean, yeah. <laughs> on behalf of us you know we you can't uh, sort of let us down yeah no 100 percent morgan so there you have it you can't let it go <laughs> but folks Thanks, leisure, leisure hotels is of course uh, one of our official accommodation suppliers to cape rugby tv and if you want to win for yourself a night's accommodation bed and breakfast at the leisure hotel so if you're up in Joburg or KZN or wherever else it is that you are right now and you're watching us on DSTV and coming down to Cape Town, Leisure Hotels um, is uh, the place to stay, that the Strand Towers uh, is where you can win a night's accommodation bed and breakfast and you want to SMS the number, le the word Leisure and your name to 33280, 33280, remember terms and conditions apply as do with the uh, Evox competition. Curry Cup uh, fixtures over the weekend is of course the Lions are up against uh, Griquas and then we see the Cheetahs up against the Blues, or at least the Bulls at uh, Bloemfontein, and the Sharks, who take on Western Province at Durban. So it's a away game for Western Province against the Sharks, and it certainly is not going to be a walk in the park. Um, before we go to Super Brew predictions, um, which I'm going to put my panel on the spot yet again, uh, some more rugby over the weekend, Mork. So it's the Steve Twete tournament currently happening. Uh, a lot of activity there? Yeah, the Steve Tito tournament, it's uh, mostly over five days um, down in Kailicha. So it started last Saturday, last Saturday and Sunday. Games kicked off at 11 o'clock and then the final is um, this coming weekend on Sunday also. I think games kick off there at 11 o'clock. So there's lots of action to, you know, I know there are teams from all over the country that are playing. I know the Soweto Rugby Club are playing. So yeah, quite a bit of rugby going on down there. Mr. H, how much of an impact does that make? I mean, this is a big tournament. It's been going on for years now <laughs> and it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. They come down the first weekend and... Uh, uh, a lot of them seem to feel that like they come down for, for the first weekend, but they're not going to win, so they're going to be okay, they can go home again. <laughs> they don't stay for the whole week for the finals. <laughs> but it starts on the first weekend like it started now, the previous weekend, Saturday. How, big, how important is this for the community? No, it's, it's fantastic that, you know, it has been a group uh, from a small uh, event to a quite a big event. And I'm very glad that, you know, they have a lot of uh, other role players that assist them. Yeah. Because on their own, they will never be able to do it, you know. Mm. So the city of Cape Town, the Department of Sport, the Union, all of them are involved. Yeah. So the Steve Twete tournament then at uh, Kaya over the weekend, folks, if you want to find some more rugby action other than the um, Sevens on Friday night at uh, um, Macassar and Belleville, 
uh, at Kai Lecce on Saturday and Sunday, the Steve Toretto tournament. Lots of teams, including the Soweto rugby team. Get down there and check it out. Super Brew prediction time in the Curry Cup. And then we'll see the Lions and the Griquas. Morgs? Um, I think uh, yeah, Griquas, like you said, have fallen asleep. So I'm going to go Lions by <laughs> 15. Oli? The Lions by 30. Where's that? Lions 20. Lions by 20. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to go the Lions by 17. Uh, then the Cheetahs take on the Bulls in Bloemfontein, Morgs. Oof, that's a tough one. Um, Cheetahs 5. Cheetahs by 5? Polly? Yeah, Cheetahs 3. Yeah. <laughs> Cheetahs 10. <laughs> Cheetahs by 10. Um, I'm going to go with the Bulls by 9. Uh, we'll go against the grain there. And then, of course, the Sharks up against Western Province in Durban. Morgs. Um, Western Province 3. Yeah, Province by 12. Province by 12, Polly. Most Western age. Province 8. Western Province by 8? Yeah, I think they might play a little bit safe. I don't know. Um, so like I said, put Chesney Colby up against um, Yanni Duplessis and the game will end right there. Um, I'm going to go with Western Province by Western Province by 11. I want to take Morgan's number and Polly's number. So Western Province by 11 up against the Sharks over the weekend. Those are your Super Brew predictions. Folks, if you want to find us on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV. That's where we share all of our videos, our highlights and clips. And you'll find out all what's happening in the world of uh, Western Province Club Rugby www.facebook.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV. Welcome once again to our DSTV viewers. It has been fantastic to have you along. Morgan Newman, um, have a good rugby weekend and I'm sure we'll see you out at uh, Kailicha every weekend. Yeah, thanks, James. There's lots happening, lots of club rugby happening all over the place. Uh, I'll be down at Kailicha supporting the, the Steve Stretcher tournament. And Polly, you're busy with a little bit of rehab at the moment. We hope to see you back in the park quite soon. Ah, thanks, James. Yeah, going, going very well. Thanks again for having me. Always good yeah, time. Always exciting. And Mr. H? Rugby plans for you for the weekend? From the one function to the other function, <laughs> you know, I love those uh, end of year functions. Lots of end of year functions in London. Yeah, Awards. Friday nights, Saturday nights. That's very really nice. <laughs> yeah, lots, lots as long of as the jumping castles for Mr. H. He's <laughs> <in his element. laughs> so totally happy with the jumping castles then. Yeah, no, so a lot, lot, of, lot of rugby action then, folks. Once again, uh, find us on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV. Remember, we are on uh, DSTV channel 263 in the Cape Town on the Cape Town Community TV channel, channel 32, channel 67. And uh, you get it free in Cape Town. You get it on DSTV on 263. So welcome to our DSTV viewers who now finally get to see Cape Rugby TV in all its glory. A lot of excitement, a lot of action, and we bring it to you every Wednesday. Repeats on Saturday mornings at 9 o'clock. Please join us then as well. That's a wrap from us, uh, from me and the panel. We'll see you guys again next week, same time, same place. Have a fantastic rugby weekend. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>